So this question turns out to be a good example of what are called mixture problems. And the first thing we have to understand is that A, or if we wish A of T, is simply going to be the number of grams of salt in the tank at a given time. Now, the rate of change is going to depend on two rates. You're going to have an input rate of salt and then also an output rate of salt. And in order for us to kind of proceed here, we need to figure out both of those rates. Let's begin with the input rate of salt, and we're going to do some dimensional analysis. We are told that this brine contains one gram of salt per liter, and then it's being pumped into the tank at a rate of four liters per minute. What we can do is take that one gram of salt per one liter, that's a concentration, and we can multiply that by the sort of pumping rate into the tank, that is four liters per one minute. Now, if you look carefully, when we multiply this, the liters would cancel out and we would be left with four. And then dimensionally, we now have grams per minute. And this is really good, actually, because if you look back at our differential equation, the dA dt, we have A measured in grams and time also measured in minutes. That grams per minute matches the input rate that we just obtained. We will turn next to the output rate and it's a very similar process. We're going to be multiplying a concentration by a sort of output rate that's coming out of the tank. The concentration's a little tricky because at any given time, the tank has a variable number of grams of salt. So we're going to say that we would have A grams of salt in the tank divided by the total volume of the tank. That happens to be 200 liters in this case, as stated here. We also know that the mixture or the solution is pumped out at the same rate. So we can multiply this by four liters per minute once again. Also, once again, the liters are going to cancel. So you're going to be left with four times A all over 200. You can reduce that by dividing the numerator and denominator by four. So now you have A over 50. And this too will be measured in grams per minute. So dimensionally, we are consistent and we match the units of the dA dt. So let's write down the differential equation now. We have dA dt equals the input rate of salt, which was 4, minus the output rate of salt, which is A over 50. We can write that as 1 50th A, which will be advantageous as we will see. Now, this is a very special type of differential equation. It is known as a linear first order equation. And in order for us to solve that, we first must put the linear equation into a standard form. Here's how we do that. We begin by rewriting the equation. We're then going to add 1 50th A to both sides of the equation. Of course, that cancels it on the right-hand side. And now we have it in a standard form. The next step is to come up with an integrating factor. And it turns out that whatever function right here that's being multiplied by your dependent variable, which in this case happens to be A, this fellow right here is going to serve as a way to get our integrating factor. Now the integrating factor, which I will abbreviate IF, is simply equal to E to the power of the integral of that expression, in this case it's a constant, and we'll be integrating that with respect to time. Now, of course, if we integrate 1 50th with respect to time, we're going to get e to the 1 50th t. And this becomes our integrating factor. And what we're going to do with that integrating factor is we're going to multiply the differential equation, both sides of it, by that integrating factor. So we're basically on step three right now. Let's rewrite the differential equation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by that e to the power of 1 50th t. Make sure you do it on the right hand side as well. And now it turns out that the left hand side can be sort of condensed. It can be rewritten in terms of a derivative. It turns out that this is equivalent to the derivative of e to the 1 50th t times our dependent variable a. Now to prove that to yourself, one thing you could do is pause the video and try to calculate the 
derivative of e to the 1 50th t times a. You're going to do that with respect to time. And if you did that using the product rule, you would actually end up with this expression right here. Now, that was presented in an earlier chapter. For our purposes now, we want to proceed in solving this for a. That is our ultimate goal. Let's rewrite the right-hand side as 4e to the 1 50th t. Next, we could very simply follow the last step, and that would be to integrate both sides of this with respect to time. So you're sort of just integrating the left side, and you're integrating the right side. When you integrate the left side, the integration and the derivative essentially cancel each other out. And so what you're left with on the left-hand side is e to the 1 50th t times a. On the right-hand side, you can take advantage of a very simple integration rule. When you're integrating e to a constant times time, that turns out to equal 1 over the constant times e to the constant time. It's a quick integration rule that will come in handy here. So we have our constant multiple of 4, and then we would multiply that by 1 over the constant, which in this case is 1 50th. And then we would have e to the 1 50th t, and then we have to include a constant of integration here. Now it gets a little dicey here. If you work out the arithmetic, you would end up with 4 times 50, which is 200. So let's rewrite that. Next, we're going to go and multiply each term by e to the negative 1 50th t. Let's make some room and we'll explain why that's a pretty effective choice here. Again, make sure you multiply each term by e to the negative 1 50th t. Now, why is this effective? Well, when you multiply these exponentials, you're going to end up adding their powers. Of course, here, when you add those powers, you'll get e to the 0, which is just 1. So these basically cancel out, leaving you with a. Same thing over here. When you multiply those exponentials, you add their powers, you get e to the 0, which is just 1. 200 times 1 is just 200. And then over here, we have that constant of integration times e to the negative 1 50th t. Now, we can actually work towards getting that constant of integration because we have an initial condition. Let's head back up to the problem and see what that initial condition was. Well, we were told that initially there were 30 grams of salt. 30 grams of salt initially. Well, that simply means, of course, that A at time 0 was equal to 30. So for T, we're going to plug in 0. And for A, we're going to plug in 30 into our solution to the differential equation. Let's go ahead and do so. And there we have it. If you look right here, negative 1 50th times 0 is 0. And you'll have E to the 0, which is just 1. And C times 1 is still C. So in other words, you have 30 is equal to 200 plus C. Subtract 200 from both sides, and you get C is equal to negative 170. So that means that that equation with the little red star on it right here will have a value of negative 170 for C. So let's plug that in and see what we have. And so we've plugged in the negative 170 for C, and we have arrived at the solution to the original differential equation with the initial condition given. And now what's interesting is you could plug in any value of time that you wanted and you can figure out how many grams of salt are in the tank at that particular time.